Some of my favorite shoes became my favorite shoes in their third iterations. Can that third time charm work for a racing shoe from on? This is a Cloud Boom Echo 3. It's time to take it for a run. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi and I'm a non-elite runner who reviews shoes here on YouTube. And today I wanna to talk to you guys about the On Cloud Boom Echo 3. It's finally off of embargo. Before I give you my thoughts on this shoe, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that On sent to me for the purpose of review, so I did not have to pay for these shoes. However, On's not paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and they're not gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the On Cloud Boom Echo 3, and let's start with the specs. This is a 37 millimeter stack height shoe with a nine millimeter drop, giving us 28 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. And in this shoe, we've got two main components. On Helion HF, that stands for Hyper Foam. It's a PIVA-based racing material. And they've got a carbon fiber plate, which they're calling their full carbon speed board. And it's an on shoe, so it's gotta have clouds in it somewhere. And they've got these little mini scallops kind of above and below the carbon fiber plate in this shoe, both on the lateral side and on the medial side, although on the medial side, it's just in the forefoot. On the outsole, you've got a mix of strategically placed rubber and exposed midsole foam, which is a setup that we've seen in a lot of other on running shoes. And on the upper, we have further signature on styling where the upper looks absolutely fantastic it fits great it's got that swiss engineering both in terms of function and in form it looks beautiful it's a one piece upper with a tongue that's only gusseted on the one side not a lot of padding around the heel cup and not a lot of structure in here either although it's not completely floppy there is a little bit of kind of vertical structure to scoop over the back of the heel. Altogether, this shoe comes in at a relatively light weight of 215 grams or 7.5 ounces. But keep in mind, the weights that On is reporting is for US men's size eight and a half, where most companies tend to report their weights for US men's size nine. That is the reference size, and that's the size of shoe that I have. Now that we've talked about all the specs on the shoe, let's talk about what it was like to actually run in it. And I'm happy to say that On really does have a legit super shoe on their hands. This is definitely a really fun racing shoe. I'm loving that Helion HF foam and that carbon fiber plate has a lot of stiffness to it without it making the shoe feel too firm. Overall, the shoe feels like it's relatively low to the ground, even though it does start off with 37 millimeters of stack height. And because of that speed board or the carbon fiber plate that's in this shoe, it does feel like a relatively stable compression when you're moving all that foam with every foot strike. And even though it does look like I'm really compressing the shoe and doing a lot of squishing, it doesn't feel like a squishy shoe. Instead, it feels like a shoe that's got a lot of pop to it every time I'm hitting the ground, I'm bouncing right off. So it definitely feels like a very, very fast shoe. I'm absolutely loving it for some of the summer workouts that I'm doing now, where I'm doing quarter mile or 400 meter repeats at 5K effort. I'm feeling both the foam and that carbon fiber plate in this shoe in a really powerful kind of way. I do think that this shoe can go the marathon distance, but for me, this feels like a shoe that for a lot of non-elites, it's gonna be very well suited for half marathon racing. The fit on the upper is absolutely impeccable as I would expect with an on shoe. It is a little bit on the less breathable side. I did have one treadmill run on the shoe because of some air quality problems that we're having here in the northern Midwest, but I felt like a lot of the sweat started to pool in the bottom of the shoe and the movement of the shoe through the air wasn't enough to kind of get rid of all that extra moisture. So the shoe felt a little bit wet and soggy to me and I was really wishing that it did a little bit bit of a better job in terms of ventilating itself. Now, the one thing that this shoe has, which is very unique, is that inside on the insole, there's these kind of like little grippy slots that go 
perpendicular to the direction of the shoe. They're a little silicone grippy tabs that help the sock from sliding around too much in there. And I feel like those were a weird addition. I haven't really seen anything like that before, but it felt like it was definitely needed on this shoe because once things started to get wet, everything started to get a little bit slippery. So I was glad to have those grippy bits in the insole of the shoe because my socks were wet and the shoe, everything was wet from all the sweating that I did. But I do feel like one thing that I let me down just a little bit on this shoe was the outsole. I just didn't feel like it was grippy enough. Uh, the sweat that got on the treadmill deck when I was doing the last hard session I did in the shoe, I felt like I was slipping around a little bit as I was trying to get those threshold repeats done on the treadmill. But other than that, I had a really good experience in this very exciting and speedy shoe. Now let's answer the question that I posed at the top of the video. Is the third time a charm for this shoe? And I think definitely yes. I really enjoy running in this shoe. It is a very fast shoe. It's a very exciting shoe to be able to run in. And like I said, I do think that it can go the marathon distance and some of you very efficient runners out there are gonna love it for that. I think for the most of us, this is gonna be a half marathon racing shoe. It could be a really good workout shoe as well because I just love it for quarter mile repeats and mile repeats at threshold effort. But the only thing is on the box of the shoe, it says that its lifespan or its projected lifespan is four marathons, which is a lot less than we're expecting from our race shoes these days. I did reach out to On to kind of inquire a little bit further into that. And they mentioned that four marathons is where they feel confident that the shoe is going to be race ready. And then after that, they anticipate that you'll gradually start to see kind of diminishing performance in things like the energy return of that foam. So this is on the shorter end of the durability spectrum and on says that this is really a shoe that you should be saving for your race day so they're not really looking at it as a shoe that you're going to do a lot of workouts and racing in they really want you to save it just for race day and perhaps look at the cloud boom echo one or two for those workout sessions that you might be doing at least that is on's position on the durability aspect now let's talk about some of the on cloud boom echo three competition and compliments and then we'll go into the buying guide in terms of the competition for the shoe there's a lot of shoes that the cloud boom echo 3 reminds me of and the first two that it reminds me of the most actually kind of don't exist anymore so they're not really competition anymore but just to help you guys understand what this shoe really kind of feels like i'll tell you that it reminds me a lot of the endorphin pro 2 that was a shoe that i thought was really fun and really great for half marathon racing i raced a half marathon in it but it wasn't a shoe that i was sure that i'd want to take for the marathon distance. Another shoe that I also think that is really similar to, I don't know if you guys have run in this one. It was a kind of a obscure shoe when it came out. It was the Hoka Carbon Rocket, not the Rocket X1 and not the Carbon X1, but the Carbon Rocket. It was a 23 or 24 millimeter stack eye shoe with a one millimeter drop and a super springy carbon fiber plate. But I feel like those two shoes are kind of like kindred spirits or maybe like older and younger siblings. Now let's give you some more kind of practical competitor suggestions based on shoes that are out in the market today. And the one shoe that I think that based on the relative firmness of the foam, but yet the speediness of the shoe that comes to mind when I think about the Cloud Boom Echo 3 is the Muzuno Wave Rebellion Pro. This one is very tall, although Technically, it somehow measures in at 39 millimeters of stack height, even though it looks much bigger than that. These are both really light shoes, really fast shoes, and they're both a little bit on that firmer end of the spectrum. So I feel like these two are really good shoes to think about. If you're thinking about one, you should think about the other. And another shoe that I think kind of reminds me of the On Cloud Boom Echo 3 is the Hoka Rocket X2. Now this is a little bit heavier, and I feel like this is even a little bit denser still than the Cloud Boom Echo 3, but there's a lot of the ride mechanics that I think are very similar. The one reminds me of the other. So those two are competitors that are in the market that I feel like kind of line up head to head really well with the Cloud Boom Echo 3. Now let's talk about shoes that you might complement the Cloud Boom Echo 3 if you're thinking about picking that shoe up and building a rotation around it. And I feel like the natural complement to the Cloud Boom Echo 3 is another on shoe, and that is the Cloud Surfer. This is the latest version of the Cloud Surfer. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I feel like this shoe is the franchise player, and really you should be building the rotation around the Cloud Surfer and bringing in the Cloud Boom Echo 3 rather than the other way around, because this shoe is really solid. I love the way that it feels underfoot. It's a great amount of squish, but it's also got a great amount of pep. It's a shoe you can really use every day. And if you wanted to have kind of a workout shoe, since you can only run so many 
many miles in the Club of Mecco 3. I think the workout shoe that really works well with it would be the Takumi Sen 9. This is one of my favorite workout shoes there are out there on the market today. And it's also a really good 5K, 10K racing shoe. So I feel like there's a lot of kind of similarities in terms of the aggressiveness in both of these shoes where I feel like having the Takumi Sen 9 would prepare you well for a race distance and a race experience in the Cloud Plume Echo 3. So I feel like these two would go really well together. They're also kind of competitors too at the same time. All right, now let's talk about the buying guide for this shoe. And this is where things kind of can go off the rails for some of you guys. The retail price for the Cloud Plume Echo 3 when it comes out is gonna be 290 US dollars, 300 euros or 260 British pounds sterling. So this is really one of the most expensive shoes that is out there on the market today. And I'm not really sure that the price point is warranted, although it is an on and for people that are looking at on and love the styling of on and all the function of on, I feel like it makes sense how they've positioned it in terms of pricing, but let's look at some of those competitors that I mentioned earlier and talk about those prices. First, let's look at the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro. This shoe retails for $250, and I feel like that's a pretty fair price for what you're getting in this shoe. It's a high-end shoe that has a lot of high-end materials and engineering in it, so that makes a lot of sense to me. And the other shoe that I thought was a good competitor to the Cloud Boom Echo 3, the Rocket X2 also comes in at 250. So that seems to be where kind of like the market is in terms of this level of performance. I think both of those shoes are also gonna be a little bit more durable than the On Cloud Boom Echo 3. So if you are a miles per dollar type of warrior, then the Cloud Boom Echo 3 at its 290 isn't really going to be the shoe for you. But if you really like On and what they've been doing and the direction they're going, that 290, it's gonna be expensive, but it's probably gonna be a price that you're willing to pay. So those are my thoughts on the On Cloud Boom Echo 3. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or better yet, stop by the live stream they do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?